Hello, welcome to Dusty Tats YouTube channel. Uh, have you ever wanted to take macro shots, really good close up shots, but you don't have a thousand dollars or more to spend on a macro lens? I'm going to show you how to do it on the cheap. First, there's a couple of different ways. There's the manual way, which is where you take a lens, put it on your camera, and then you take another lens and you butt it up against the other lens like this, and you try and hold it there to get your shot. That's hard. Now, the second way is you can get a coupling device, which looks like this. Okay. As you can see, there are threads on each side of this, and what that allows you to do is thread this onto the filter here, thread it onto the filter here. Now, if you're like me, you have a 52 and a 58, or maybe different sizes. These come in different sizes. So I got that, and then I've also got this right here, which is a step up. This screws into a 52 millimeter filter, and it steps up to a 58. So, you screw this onto the filter here, like so. Now this is a Nikon lens, and this is a Canon lens, and this is going to be done on a Canon body. Then we take the cap off take the couple wing and we screw it onto the step up ring like so and then we take the two lenses and very carefully thread them together okay now the best way I've found that the lens that is going to be attached to the camera set that on your highest zoom in so that would be 55 mil and then the other lens you want to set it to the lowest which is 35 take your lens cap off here take the one off here and this is what you end up with this is what it looks like two lenses threaded together. So now you take your camera body and this is a, a Canon T4i and then you're going to take your newly threaded lens and you're going to attach that there like so. Then you end up with some monster lens like this. Now it would behoove you to to make sure that you're supporting the weight because it can put a strain on the mounting connection to the body because it does get a little heavy so make sure your attached lens is at its optimal zoom range which is 55 here and then the other one is set to its lowest make sure both lenses are focused all the way out now on the Nikon lens I have and the reason I use that is because I can control the aperture it has an aperture ring here so I open the aperture all the way up which I doubt you can see that but you might be able to that way it's wide open and then you can take super macro shots turn the camera on get your settings where you need them make sure your aperture is wide open on the other lens as well 
and you may want to go ahead and adjust your ISO for the room that you're in, but I'm going to be using the flash, so we don't really need to adjust my ISO on this camera. But it allows you to get right up on what you're taking a picture of. Let me show you that. Now, can you see that? You see how close that is? And then I will show you what it looks like. That's what it looks like when you take the picture. It's a little circle, but you hit your zoom in on it. And then look what happens. Now, I don't know how well this is transferring to video. This is a close up on a Canon lens cap. I'm going to do one more shot with the green of the table. So you can kind of get an idea of that. This is the wood grain on a dinner tray. And it takes a little bit of trial and error to get it. Okay, so then. Here we have, zoom it in, just the amount of detail is incredible. Now if you look on my Facebook page, Dusty Tats Photography, on Facebook you'll see some of these pictures like this, they're really super macro shots. Another close up of the wood grain. Yeah. And that's how you do that super macro with two lenses and a couple coupling link now there is one more way and i'm going to show you that okay we're back just a minute now again this is going to be for a single lens like if you only have one lens for your camera and you want to get better macro shots than what the lens allows what you do and again, I'm going to use the Nikon lens because I can control the aperture on it. And what I mean by that is if you look right here, see how big that hole is? And then I can close the aperture down real small. That opens it wide open and shuts it down all the way. So that's, that's what the aperture does. And that's why I like using the Nikon lens. It's an older lens, so it has the aperture ring on it. Okay, so again, this is a 52 mil. So we're going to be using the step up for uh, 52 to 58. So I'm going to screw that onto the lens like so. Okay. Now, the other thing you're going to need for this is this right here. This is a reverse th a reverse foot. So what this does is it's the foot just like you would find on your Canon lens. Okay, it matches the Canon footprint. Okay, it's got the same locking rings and all that. Okay, so it matches the opening here. So what we're gonna do. And this is a 58 mil thread, so that's why we're using the step up ring. And we're going to thread that on here, just like so. And this has the little red dot, so you match it up with the red dot on your cannon. And it fits in there. And then clicks and locks into place. Okay, now on this one, you're going to set your depth and all that. Turn your camera on. And again, I always use the flash because it just helps add light. So that's what that looks like. OK. 
Okay, so I'll give you a better view. Yeah, so I'll give it a couple shots. I'll show you what they look like. Okay, so, and again, that's focused in here at 35. Now we're going to adjust that in just a second. So there's what your picture will look like. And that's not zoomed in, but yet here comes the zoom in. And that's zoomed in all the way. Now, I know it doesn't translate very well. But I'll do stills and put them into the video so you can really get a good idea of how it looks. Now we're going to change the uh, zoom range on here we just pumped that up to 70 mil which is what this lens is it's uh, 35 yeah 35 mil to 70 zoom and then this one should allow us to get a little closer on the zoom or perhaps not farther away it produces a really good shot also now one thing you do need to be and that is proficient in manual focus because if you're not any good at manual focus your shots will not come out focused so that's that one this is a reverse lens macro shot, close up wood. Okay. Well, I hope this helps explain how to get some super macro shots and better macro shots. Um, the devices that you'll need to get. And uh, also one thing to note on Canon cameras, and I think Nikon also, is that whenever you do the reverse lens, it's going to show your f-stop at double zero which means it's not showing an f-stop because you don't have the electronics of the lens attached so jump on over to my facebook page that's dusty tats photography on facebook uh, dusty tats on youtube and that's d-u-s-t-y-t-a-t-s